Bad boy. Miss the oil. Move it back just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about the issue. Before we do that, I need to point out something that makes us different and Christian from everybody else. Most people in the world are out of the church do this. They focus on their personality, which is the way we be, the, the decisions that we make and the way we behave in our preferences, or very often people will talk about reinventing themselves. In the church, we do something different, something deeper. It is character. I think you can figure out the difference between personality and character. Very simply put, personality is superficial. Character is deep, embedded. So for us who are Christian, we try to live a Christian character. And how do we do that? I'm going to put an X through there. It is not what we want. Your personality is who you are. If there's something wrong with your personality, don't fix your personality. Fix your character. Because this is cosmetic, which is about appearances. Character is about what happens in your soul. And so in order to have a good character, you need something called virtue. Now you've heard of people use expressions like strength of character. We've heard that before. It's very appropriate. Because the word virtue comes from the Latin word meaning strength. And there are strengths that we are born with that make us Good. There are four particular virtues that we have automatically, whether we are baptized or not, that make us good. First one is prudence. Prudence is what most people don't actually do much anymore. Because most people, when they want to make a decision, will go by how they feel about things. The one thing that really bugs me is when people say, I feel that I should do this, so I feel that I should do that. I don't care how you feel. What's important is the way you think in order to make a good judgment. So for example, we've all taken math multiple choice tests. Right? I tell you a very, very good way to flunk your math multiple choice test is to try to feel your way to the answer. I feel this one's B, I feel this one is D, I feel this one is C. That's not going to work. You have to figure it out. You have to do the math, find your answer, and pick the multiple choice that matches your answer. You have to use your head. That's what the virtue of prudence is. It is right. Reason applies. A very simple example. When you are going to cross the street, you're going to look both ways, make sure there isn't ice under your feet, and then cross. That's the virtue of prudent. The next one. This is my favorite one. For someone by 
present here what means for something to be just, and I'm pretty sure you get it wrong. But that is fine. If you get it wrong, that's good, because I can show you why what you've been told is not true in the schools or in the television. So who wants to venture a definition of justice? What do you think justice means? Please, someone give me a wrong answer. I would like a wrong answer. Yes. Ah, to be fair. <laughs> Most people think that justice means fairness. It does not. For example, the two young ladies here. One is hungry and one is not. I have a whole sandwich. The fair thing to do would be to give one sandwich to each, one half to each, right? The just thing to do would be to give the whole sandwich to the hungry one. You see the difference? We are so preoccupied in giving everybody the same thing. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, very good. We are so preoccupied with giving everybody the same thing that we don't do justice properly. Justice means, very simply, to give that which you owe to someone. She's hungry. I have a sandwich. It belongs to her. That is the definition of justice. Fairness is a cheap definition of justice. Remember that very well. Because very often we're hearing from the legislature or from the schools, we're so obsessed with what is fair that we are doing, that we are not fulfilling justice. The next one. Culture two. It's related to the word fortress. Fortitude is a kind of moral courage that makes us stand up for what is right. When your friend is being bullied in the hallway at school, you say, hey, knock it off. Or if someone's picking on your little brother or little sister, you say, you deal with me first before you deal with my little brother or sister. That is fortitude. If someone says, here's the answer key for next Friday's test, you say, that's all the two. Okay? And the last one is, temperance is when you know that enough is enough. So, for example, it is 11 o'clock in the morning and I've just finished my old seven cup of coffee. And I'm like, yeah, enough is enough. Or, I'm having my third banter of the day. I probably shouldn't have another one until maybe tomorrow. That's temperament. It's when you know enough is enough. Now there are things that you do that are fun, like video games and going to McDonald's. If that's what you do, you know when you had enough. You know that when you had too much, you are not being good. These four, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance, there's a couple of names for them. You can either call them the human virtues, because all humans are born with these. You can call them the cardinal virtues, because they are very important. Every other good habit comes from one of these four. Some people call them the, the, the human virtues, or the cardinal virtues, or the moral virtues. Okay? One last thing. 
Along for prudence is the most important. Because with prudence, you can determine what you owe to someone. With prudence, you can determine in what way you can be strong. With prudence, you can figure out when enough is enough. Now, a lot of people will come up to me and say, you know what, I, I'm a good person, I don't need to go to church. Well, the first point will collect the thought, the second point will not. We are good, but we're not good enough for God. It's not exactly your fault, but that's just the way it is. You see, God is the goodness. He is goodness itself. Our goodness are just copies of it. It's not the exact same thing as God's goodness. So that is why even good people are going to make mistakes with one of these. You see, I might have too much coffee, too much Fanta. I might impulsively drive if I see a uh, pastor vice instead of, you know, being careful, I'm going to tell someone, hey, hold my coffee, watch me do this. And I do some skidding on the ice. Or, or maybe someone Maybe if I'm in the store, or maybe if I see someone here uh, bullying one of the other ones, and I don't do anything about it, I fall short. Our goodness is not good enough. So we need something more. And so in addition to these four virtues, there are three more which you guys already know. When you are born, you have these. Over time, they kind of diminish. They get impaired. So when you are baptized, you get three more virtues. Now we are like superheroes, yes? How many of you seen the TV show Heroes? With Silo and, and Matt Pugman. Nobody knows any of that? No? You have to watch it. If you can handle blood, you can watch it. <laughs> we all want to be superheroes in some way, right? We want to be supernatural. Well, guess what? Those of you who are baptized are. We have supernatural power. These are natural virtues, or human virtues. Then there are three supernatural virtues. You know these. What's this? What's this one going to be? Oh, there you go. And then, love, there you go. Okay? So when you are baptized, this is what happens. When you are baptized, your human virtues are elevated. They are stronger. We are more capable of being truly just, fortitudinous, and temperate. And we have these in addition. We believe in God, we count on God's promises, and we love God and neighbor. These together is what leads us to heaven, which is where we are going to go someday, please God. Our journey to heaven began when we were baptized, these are the tools that God has given to us to help us to get to heaven. These are things that we do. So let's practice some of this. We know, for example, if I give you a situation, so I have, the, the, somebody wants to watch, someone, Jodal gave me this wonderful example last week. So someone wants to watch a soccer game. It's one tall person, one medium height person, one short person. There are three blocks, all at the same size. Do you want to figure out how these people can watch the soccer game over the fence? The top person can stand at his own. The medium height person can probably stand at one box, 
in the short field we can burn down two blocks and leave all the over the fence to watch the game. Right, we're using our heads, we can just use two limbs. What's the best you want? Okay, let's take, uh, yeah, the best you jump then. So, you know what I do when I keep in my car, I keep a bunch of five dollar Tim Horton cards. If there's a home that person who is hungry, I will give it to them. Right? So if I'm hungry, and I'm a bit cheap, I don't want to spend any money, I could probably take one of those bad dollars to open cars and spend it on myself. It doesn't belong to me anymore. I bought it for those homeless people, that means I'm stealing. So I keep it in my car because it belongs to a homeless person that I might cost my pants who's hungry. We can figure these things out. With these, we we'll do them by training. It's practice. So with the virtue of hope, for the virtue of faith, you would say something like, Dear God, I believe that you are one God and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe that you sent Jesus to save me from my sin. Amen. That, that's an act of faith. And after hope would be, dear God, I am, I am confident in your promises. And I know that if I do my part, I will obtain the promises you have for me. Amen. Very easy. The virtue of love, you would say, dear God, I love you and I love others for your sake. Help me to love even more. Amen. So we do these prayerfully, we do these actively. Innovation. And when you have a question or an option and you want to determine what is right or what is wrong and what you should do, figure it out. That's what these are for. And that is why students is called the charioteer of the vision. Because student helps us to operate these properly. Does that make sense? Okay, now go back to your group and go through the discussion question. And then I have one more, and then we will have math later.